Stitch people. My name's Debbie. I'm Mum Burst Stitchery here on Flosstube and on Instagram and this is a channel all about cross stitch. First up, massive welcome whether you're returning or this is your first time here. Thank you for stopping by. Hopefully you like some of the projects that I'm going to show you. And also apologies if you hear any background noise, especially if you have ear pods in. Um, the construction crew next door are putting in the internal walls of the house that they're building. So this is as quiet as it gets. But I have a lot of stitching to show you, so I have lots of notes today. Um, the lineup is kind of my April stitching, um, stitchy shopping, um, things that I've got in this month, including my expo order came in, and my mania plans, which include some new starts. So hopefully you'll enjoy. Uh, first up, we'll start with some finishes. Um, I'm participating in Whipgo, and it's a Facebook group, and it's run well, it was the brainchild of Jessie Marie Does Stuff here on Flosstube and on Instagram. And it's essentially stitchy bingo. And you fill in your bingo board. In fact, I'll show you my Wotec version. I just have mine drawn. It's essentially a bingo board and you fill it in with your projects however you like. Um, you can repeat them. It's totally up to you. And every month Jesse will call two numbers and the goal that you achieve on your project and your reward for actually getting a bingo is all up to you. And so everything I've coloured in, I've it's a number that's been called and I finished it. The two that just have the box drawn around it, there are my main projects and I'll show you, the, show you those in a minute. Um, so I focused on those projects this month and actually got both of them finished. The first one I have is Red Riding Hood and that's by the Cricut Collection and I'll put a before picture in here. And like I said, I finished this one, let's clear some space already. And this is, oh, that's the back. <laughs> that doesn't help you. That's, there we go. And that is stitched on 32 count Lugana and it's only three colours of DMC which are 304, 640 and 3371. And that one was a nice easy stitch. Um, I really like stitching that one. I have the three little bears and the three bears and I think the three little pigs as well from the series. Um, but I'd like to pick them all up at some point. So that was the first one off my bingo board. Um, the next, I actually just finished this morning. <laughs> so that's why I was waiting to do a video until I finished it. And it is the Harvest Keeper by Plum Street Samplers. And here's where I was before. So this one actually took a while. I underestimated how much stitching was actually in this piece. And that's where that one is. And this is on 36 count Wren by Picture This Plus. And I stitched this one over two. And I only substituted two of the colours. I think it was the witch's dress and the green maybe in the border. Um, just because my dial up didn't look anything like the cover photo. But I can list them below if anybody wants to know. So that's that one. So I'm glad to get them coloured in and off. Uh, let's see what's next. Oh. Next up is actually one of the projects that was called um, for me. I pulled it out for one of the Stitchy Challenge groups and it's Moths and Bugs by Punochka. It's an Etsy shop and I'll link everything that I can below. And this one you probably don't know before because I just worked on the two little bugs on the side and got those done. I love this. It's almost like a bright antique Victorian bug display. And this is stitched on 32 count Lugana Nyx by Under the Sea Fabrics. And this is stitched on DMC. I think there's about 10 colours in this. But that was actually one of the projects that was called for me. So I don't know how I'm going to fit in with my mania plans, but it might end up being my car project when I sit outside karate waiting on my kids. The second project that's actually called for me, but I haven't worked on since I started it, is Grace, um, happy, I've called it Grace Skies on my Whipco board, but it's actually called Happy Skies and it's by Stitch Rovia, Emma Congdon. And I'll put the cover photo in here. And this will be my starting point on this. 
Again, it's all in DMC, and this is on 28 count dove grey monocle. So hopefully we'll squeeze some stitches into that. Um, but again, I don't know how it's gonna work with Mania, but we'll try. It might be the first month that I don't actually finish my Whipco projects because they've got a lot of stitches to get them done on them. Also this month, uh, another finish that I had um, was a start and a finish, and it is the Bluebird Sampler by Heart and Hand. And this is on 40 Count Mallow. Um, I think it's just as wide work. And I stitched this in Classic Colorworks um, Belsois Ocean Tide. It helps if I put it on a plain bit. There we go. And this is the first time I've used um, Belsois. Um, and I actually really liked it. I was a bit worried at first because it almost feels like fuzzy on the skein. It's not like the other silk that I've used. Um, where it's really shiny and smooth. This one actually looks a little bit fuzzy but it's not like that at all when you're stitching with it and I will definitely use it again and in fact I think I have a couple of skeins in different colours um, that I was put off because it was fuzzy but definitely definitely will use it again and this actually goes with my little red bird sampler as well that's on the back of the same fabric so hopefully they will be tiny tiny pillows at some point I just need to get my sewing machine back out now like dig it out from under the pile of fabric that's like stacked up on top of it so the rest of the month, um, out with my Whipco projects, I couldn't really settle on something to work with or work on and I kept switching between projects. I found out I needed to have surgery on my ankle again. Um, last year I had lateral ligament reconstruction. Um, my ankle and foot kept, well my foot and my leg kept coming apart too easily and I kept spraining my ankle so they essentially hemmed the ligaments. Um, but recently the pain started coming back and I could feel something sharp coming out of my skin and it was my body rejecting the stitches and actively pushing them out so I had to have surgery to fix it. But that leading up to that, I couldn't really settle on anything. Um, so you'll see these next couple of projects haven't got that much stitches in them, but I'll show you them anyway. The first is my full coverage project for the month and it is Hippo Reflection, which is an artistry chart. And I'll put where I was before. And will the light shine through? Yeah, that's fine. I actually finished up the page here and started on this page. And I really do, I'm going to work on this one until um, Mania starts on Saturday. I really want to finish out this page because the next page actually has his eye in it. And this is on 25 count, easy count. And I'm sitting this one over one full cross. But my full coverage stitching has definitely been neglected for a while, so I need to pick a pace up on that. My next one I pulled out was, and these are probably pulled out for stitchy challenges, so that's why they probably don't have as much too, and it was easy to put them down. But the next one I pulled out was Alice Meets the Caterpillar, and that is by Gera. And you can get this as a PDF download from creativepoppy.com. And I'll put where I was before. And here is where I am now. There you go. And this is on DMC and it's stitched on, I think it's 32 count Dirty Linen by Witch Up. And I think I've filled in the rest of the mushroom this month. So I'm going to leave that one on the QSAP because that's a nice one to pick up and just stitch little blocks of colour. The next project was, and this was supposed to be my focus project for me, but I didn't end up working on it as much as I would. I just couldn't get into it. And it's Gathering Eggs by Mirabella. And I will put where I was before. And here is where I am now. And again, I think I just filled in a lot of the white on her dress. And I just couldn't get into stitching her at all. And she is on 32 count raw. Um, this was from Joanne's when my Joanne sold cross stitch fabric. So that's her. And I've actually taken her off the QSAP for the video, which kind of means that I'm probably not going to work on her until she's called for whip go because she is on my board. The next one was a new start. Um, I started this when my expo order came in and it's O Feathers by Rosewood Manor. This was my favourite out of the lot um, of the things I ordered and I wanted to start it. And I ordered the Sulky pack um, too and it's the first time using Sulky. 
and I like it. I probably wouldn't use it on anything lower than 32 count, and this is 32 count Lugana, I think it's antique white. Um, just coverage wise, um, you can still see some fabric behind it, but I would have to see it probably depends on the fabric dye as well. But I made a good start, um, it's fun to stitch, it's nice and bright, and I have a pile of threads hanging here because I'm going to work on this today. I'm going to might actually take it in the car with me. Um, whenever I have a project like this, I like to cut off a bunch of threads. And next time when I pick it up, I try and work in all those threads like a league, like a game. And yeah, so that's my next target. Next time I pick it up is to put all these threads in. And before I put it down, I'll cut another bunch of threads and stick them to my needle minder. Just so it encourages me to pick it up. But that's that one. Um, it's quite a big chart. And yeah, like I said, first time using Selkie, would, I would definitely use them again, um, but probably not on anything lower than 32. But I like it. I like to be able to use one strand. Uh, so that's that. And that's all my whips. We managed to get through that quite fast. Um, next up, I will put this away and I'll be right back with everything else that came in for Expo and everything else that came in this month. Okay, so like I said, my Needlework Expo order came in and I actually made my pre-order with Garon Citry and I cannot fault their service at all. They were fantastic. They kept me updated the entire way when they were waiting on charts coming in um, and they shipped out super fast. So I will definitely order from them again and highly recommend them. So also, apart from O Feathers that I've just shown you, um, my order included um, Cross Stitch Fun. It's a Keslin chart. And I'm on a Quaker kick, it seems, right now. Um, and this is a big chart. This is 445 by 267. And yeah, that's a big commitment. So maybe not quite yet. Uh, another Quaker is Quaker Turtle. And this is by Ori TM. And this almost made it into my mania plans. But not quite. I also made a uh, expo order from Abby Top Knot Stitcher. Uh, top Knot Stitcher Shop and because she had um, this little the Highland Coo and I couldn't pass out the Scottish cow. Um, yeah and that's by Bendy Stitchy. Is it number 56? So I love that one. I loved all the cows that came out as part of Expo, all the little designs. Um, and that couldn't travel on its own so I also picked up Bigfoot Bunch by Palm Street Samplers. I still need to pick up the Yeti too. And she also threw in a complimentary needle minder. And there we go. Top knot stitcher shop. Oh, you can't see that. It should have taken everything out of the packaging. Top knot stitcher shop. Uh, one thing I was really excited that I knew was actually coming this month um, was the Emma Congdon book, um, Cross Stitch for the Earth. You might have seen it all over Instagram or on uh, Flushtube the British some of the British stitchers actually got this way before us um I pre-ordered from Amazon and this is well worth the money um super cheap for the amount of de designs that are actually in this and Michelle Mama Loves You GB actually has a really good flip through video dedicated to just this book so I will link that below because it's better than anything I can show you but if you love Emma Congdon or nature themed cross stitch designs um this book is absolutely fantastic. I have her first one too, but this one is definitely my favourite of them both. And I can't wait to just start working on each design and just work my way through the book. But I was looking forward to this one and it did not disappoint. Uh, next, I actually have my fabric of the month. Um, it just arrived the other day from Under the Sea Fabrics. And I got a 40 count and this is called Amaryllis. And it is a beautiful, warm, almost like honey yellow colour. And I'm trying to build up my almost neutral coloured stash. Um, I have lots of 32 and 28, but not many of the higher counts to have a good selection to pick from when the project comes up. But this one is beautiful. And if you're not part of Fabric of the Month um, monthly club, I think they all come up for sale in December. You can get a chance to buy some of the ones that were featured during the year. Also from Leslie and I got these that came last time, um, but uh, Leslie got me this little bag that says Mama Bear. She picked that up for me. And I actually put these in there for safekeeping and forgot about them. It's like a lot of things. 
I put them away for safekeeping and couldn't find them, can't find them after. I don't know how well you're going to see it, they're, they're Rainbow Leopard Print Scissors by Perman of Copenhagen. But if they're not on her website, just send her a message if you would like a pair of those. But I love those, I'm forever losing scissors too. They always fall down the couch and I forget about them. Uh, also, I picked up one of the recent Mirabilla's. This is Echo Lake. I like that it's different. It's different from Mira. But I love the colours in that. But again, no plans to start, start that anytime soon. Another piece of fabric I picked up was from Friday Night Fight Night on Be Stitch Me. And this one is called Guardian and it is a 36 count. That's exactly it. It's like a warm butternut squash. But again, to the, add to the higher higher count stash. I love that one. It's a nice rich colour. I also picked up one chart, just one. Um, Heaven Earth Designs had a 40% off sale and I'm going to have to live forever to stitch everything but I love this one. I think somebody was stitching it in the Heaven Earth Facebook group and I love all things um, Japanese themed so this is on my two stitch list at some point. And this is Japan Garden by Dominic Davison. And interestingly, um, this is a full size. If you see the mini of this one, the building's actually different. It's not the same. It's, they're both called Japan Garden, but they're not actually the same image. There's a slight difference. This is a different building, I think, in the mini. So that's why I picked, I like the bigger one for her. From Kitten Stitcher, I picked up you probably seen this book a lot of places, the sampler, the ultimate sampler motif source book by Brenda Keys. And this is going to be fantastic, especially things like the little Quakers. If you don't want to put all the alphabets between a lot of some of the designs, you can just fill in with like a little motif. Um, yeah, fantastic book. So definitely one for the collection if you haven't got this one. And I also threw in to try out Lady Dot Creates the little chenille trim. Uh, there wasn't many to choose from, but I picked up this one. This is Algae, just to give it a try. And uh, I'm sure like a lot of people uh, that, that went a little bit crazy for the new Long Dog Sampler. I love it. And this is the Queen's Gambit. So I downloaded this. And I have plans to stitch it on. 36 count cream uh, linen. Uh, I think it's Weigart. Uh, with DMC 355 and this was almost my mania. I was going to have a monogamous mania and just stitch on this um, but then I changed my mind. <laughs> like like most of the things in this pile I changed my mind but that was so that is Kitty Duck so it's going to be started at some point just not for mania. This was also nearly a mania plan. Um, this is A Big Red Ship of Life by Ink Circles. I picked this up from 123 along with a bunch of DMC 743 and 25 count Navy Lugana. So I was going to have a big yellow ship, but again, I want to have starch for Mania. So Monogamous Mania went out the window. Oh, and also in my 1 to 3 pile, I picked up the new 2021 Prairie Schooler Santa. I love that he's carrying all the animals. So that's why I grabbed him. And like Brenda and Laura says, buy all the blackbirds. Um, this is the Winds of Autumn book and it does not disappoint. Sometimes I don't like that the designs are across, they're on one page and then you have to turn the page to see the other half of the design. I wish they were all across maybe the, the, the fold in the middle if they were gonna make them, like put them on the same page, not turn the page to see the rest of the design. But love the book, beautifully printed. And yeah, can't wait to start some of those. Just not yet. So now we can move on to Mania plans. So Stitch Mania is right around the corner. And I think Mania, when it originally started, was 2015. And the original idea was 15 new starts, one each day in the start of May. And each year, people added one onto it. It evolved into some people started something every single day for the month multiple starts, some people stitch monogamously. It's just an event in the stitchy calendar and one everybody loves. 
and I think I've tried so many different ways over the years um, but this year the first of May is a Saturday and there's five Saturdays in the month so I'm gonna have a new start each Saturday so five new starts which isn't crazy but it's definitely a lot but I'm excited for it um, and I like the idea of a theme so I started with well I have a lot of kits so maybe I could do a kit mania and then that evolved into they all have animals and when I ran past my friends Kerry shouted out Animania and I'm taking it and I'm running with it so this year 2021 I'm having an Animania so if you're such an animal stuff too feel free to use the hashtag everybody loves animal charts and I would love to see them so the first um I'm gonna start this one's called he's a fun guy and it's a bothy threads kit and I actually ordered that this month from 123 Stitch and I couldn't resist him any longer. I've been watching Lynn the Lancashire Stitcher stitch him and he's just so cute. And I love both the threads and the Rensdale designs. And so, yep, he is fully kitted and ready to go for Saturday. And it's all pre-started as well. I have to go make all my working copies now that I can actually drive again. So I'll do that tomorrow and be ready. But that is going to be my kickoff to Mania. And that's my first one. Sorry, they're a bit crinkly. That's the downside of kits. The second one on the eighth, I'm going to start. I missed a really old one. It's actually missing <laughs> the corner there. This is called Heavy Going Grizzly. And it's a Janelin kit. And I've seen this one listed as Bucilla as well. So I don't know if it's like Sunset and Dimensions are the same. Um, but this one's ready, readily available on eBay without any problems. Um, so yeah, this one again, I've switched. Well, this one I've switched out the fabric. I'm going to use a 32 count uh, Lugana um, instead of the Ada and this one I avoided for the longest time because the threads aren't pre-sorted but looking at the directions it's not going to be too hard to unscramble those bundles but love a big bear let's start number two number three on the 15th of May is going to be Giants of the Sea and this is a sunset kit and I think, again, I avoided starting this one because I saw the big pile of unsorted threads in the package. <laughs> um, but again, reading the instructions, they don't look like, there's not many colours, so they're not going to be too hard to unscramble and they're in nice little hanks. So that's going to be that one, but I'm actually switching out the fabric too um, because the fabric was kind of old and like crunchy feeling. I don't know if it would probably soften up when I worked with it, but... I'm going to swap this out and I'm going to use 28 count Arctic by Picture This Plus. So I'm hoping that's kind of going to look like a stormy, stormy sky. Hopefully the colours go. I'm sure it will. And on the 22nd, this was a recent kit, is Owl. And so many people messaged and said this they have this kit too. So if you want to pull yours out, start it, please join in. Um, I love him. He looks so majestic. And I'll link where I got him below. But if you type in Cross Stitch Owl Kit on Etsy, it pops up a bunch of places. And I think I'm just going to use the fabric that's in there because it's 16 count Ada by Zweiger. So it's usually quite good. So I'll probably use that. And it looks like his threads are all pre-sorted too. So just a working copy will be needed for him. And the last up, the last Saturday is the 29th and I think there's only about two days there. It'll give me two days so I picked something small. And I'm going to start, um, is it Yellow Swallowtail? Yeah, Yellow Swallowtail by Mill Hill. It'll probably take me longer to sort this one's threads out than some of the bigger kits. Um, so yeah, just that one. And I'm so excited to have all these starts for Mania. I have a lot of projects, but it feels like this is pushing me out of my comfort zone, starting all these things in one month. Um, but yeah, that's what Mania is all about. And I can't wait to see other people's videos or people's posts on Instagram. Um, I love following the hashtag. So, but yeah, if you want to use Animania, if you're stitching it in with an animal themed, please use it. Um, I love to see all your projects. I can't wait to start things and hopefully next month I'll be back with lots of progress. In the meantime, if you want to follow along uh, Mumber Stitchery or if you have 
on Instagram. And if you have any questions, that's probably the best place to message me. Sometimes messages or comments disappear into the YouTube void. Um, I don't see them. I see the alert that there was a message there, but then I can never find it when I go. So if I haven't replied to your comments, um, please know I probably I'll see it eventually when I go through them all. Just sometimes they disappear in the message part of the YouTube studio. Um, but until then, I hope you have a great May, however you are or not. Um, celebrating the stitchy holiday as it is. I feel I feel that's why I call it. It's like a stitchy holiday event. Um, however you choose to celebrate it, whether you just watch, I hope you have fun. I hope you get lots of stitches in and I will see you next month. Bye!